said a number two pencil. <laughs> and then I thought you said, I thought you said. <laughs> What's the password? Um, I forgot. Walter, get in here. <laughs> water, water, water. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Lemon, you don't have to be so nervous. Of course I do. If any of the other students find out I'm performing here, I am doomed. Well, I'm glad you're letting me work off my detention by being your roadie. Just make sure you do a good job. Where's Freddy Freshman? Uh, right next to your stool. Where you wanted him. And what about my set list? Taped to the stage. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Mr. Lemon, you have nothing to worry about. Got and everything under control. And, and you're absolutely certain that you told no one about this gig? Remember, loose lips could sink Lippman. I know you keep a secret, Mr. Lippman. Mm -hmm. And now, let's bring on our next performer. That's me! I'm on! Break an egg, Mr. Whitman! Let's break a leg, you idiot! <laughs> He's a low-level administrator at a local high school. Please welcome Mr. Elliot Whitman! Thank you! Great to be here! It, it, is this her? <laughs> so... Any freshmen in the audience? Yes! <laughs> Any sophomores? Um, yes! What's so funny? Nothing. Okay, you guys, what are you reading? <laughs> Nothing. Well, actually, it's my journal. You keep a journal? That seems so unlike you. It seems so intelligent. <laughs> it's for English class. We're supposed to write down all the deep and important stuff that we notice. Hmm, that must be a pretty thin book. Let me see it. No way, it's a secret. Important things I've noticed. I've noticed that Rachel Bradley has... Kevin, that's gross! I told you it was a secret. I guess some things should stay a secret. Yeah, but sometimes it's better to let secrets out. What do you mean, Tara? Don't you remember? It was earlier in the year and I was really excited. But everyone was acting so strange. I ran into Alex and Diane in the hall, remember? Alex, Diane! Oh, oh. hi. <laughs> well, today is the day. What day? You know, my favorite day. The day everyone waits for all year long. <gasps> oh my gosh, you're right. Today's the day the exterminator sprays the lockers. I forgot to empty out my stuff. Me too. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. So, do I look any different? Different from what? Different from yesterday. Oh, oh yeah, right. You changed your clothes. That was a trick question. Wait, don't tell me. You put makeup over that big zit on your forehead. It looks good. Yeah. Oh, we gotta go. Yeah, see ya. Papa! Oh, hey, Tara. Um, this is an incredible day for me astrologically. Oh, really? Uh, yep, this day every year. In fact, I made up a song about it. You want to hear it? Yeah, sure. Venus is rising all day. The moon's in the seventh house. Mars aligned with Saturn. Let's blow some candles out. I don't know, Terry. You can't really tap your foot to it. Well, you can tap your whole body to this one. <laughs> Oh, hi, Tara. 
Mm, nice hat. Guess whose birthday it is today? Well, by the way you're dressed, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. <laughs> no, I guess not. Today is the birthday of Mule T. Gomper, the man who invented the gift box, right? <sighs> Happy birthday. Cool cupcake, Tara. Let me guess what kind it is. You give that back! No! It's hard to tell. The candle smoke gets up my nose and then... Oh, no! You ruined my birthday cake. How do you know I ruined it? You haven't even tasted it. Mmm, <laughs> tangy. Eat the rest. I don't care. I mean, what was I thinking, Billy? Today's a day like any other day. It's childish to believe that I'd be any happier if someone came up to me today and said... Aren't you going to pull the ribbon? <laughs> Another welcome freshman dating update with that man about town, Kevin. Hi. You know, guys often ask me, how do I make a girl want to go out with me? Well, fellas, when it comes to attracting the ladies, a little mystery can go a long way. By dropping hints that you have a secret life, you develop an air of intrigue that no lady can resist. It works for me. Let's see how well it works for my pal, Walter. Uh, excuse me. I'd like to get into my locker. So would someone else, it would seem. What? Inspector Walter at your service. Yes, this locker has definitely been tampered with. You can tell just by looking at it? I can tell many things that escape the normal, inexperienced eye. Wow. Well, for example, I can tell that you could use a very good skin cleanser. You jerk! <laughs> That has got to hurt. Well, at least Walter got real close to her. Too bad he's still clueless. Next week, let's hope he cracks the case and not his skull. When it came on, we'll be back with more hot tips. This has been another dating update. Tune in again for more advice with that righteous Romeo, the K-Man, Kevin himself. Tara, if you want to have a sleepover, why don't you just send out invitations like a normal person? Why do we have to meet in the bathroom? Yeah, what's the big secret? Look, you guys, every time one of us tries to have a sleepover, Merv and those guys find out about it and then they try to crash it. Yeah, we can see us in our 90s, morons. Why don't they just grow up? Well, this time there's no way they're going to bug us because they're not going to find out about it. What are they saying? <laughs> Major baby to Tara's. Saturday night. It's a sleepover. Cool, they'll be wearing their 90s. Yes! We'll bring a cheese log! They'll be all over us! Dude, it's a slumber party. Girls only. Yeah, three guys wouldn't exactly be welcome. Mm. Well, if you have to be a girl, then how are we gonna get in? Hey! hey. So then he starts laughing really hard. And milk was coming out of his nose. It was the most embarrassing day. Oh. Uh, that must be the pizza. We are new Hungarian exchange students. We come to swing the party here. Uh, sure. Come on in. <laughs> and now let's introduce ourselves. I am Shasha. This is Eva. And this is Martha. Yes. Please be excusing our English. We have only been in country short distance. <laughs> yes, we have uh, come to study American customs and um. Nighttime sleeping clothes. <laughs> Please, be accepting old cheese log. It's delicacy in our country. Uh, thanks. Why don't you go in the kitchen and help yourself to a soft drink? Thank you, please. <laughs> we have great food. <laughs> you have to hand it to those guys. They don't give up easily. Who do they think they're fooling? What are we going to do? Throw them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw them out. <laughs> Wait, you guys, we're wasting a perfect opportunity here. What do you mean, Alex? Look, just follow my lead, and we'll teach these clowns a lesson they'll never forget. <laughs> hey, I've got an idea. How about a game? Oh, American party game. You teach us to play, yes? Oh, we are very ready to rock and shit. <laughs> okay, okay, everyone sit in a circle. <laughs> This 
is truth or dare. Somebody asks you a question. Either you answer it or that person can dare you to do something, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll go first. Sarah, truth or dare, who would you rather kiss? Kevin, Walter, <laughs> Murr, or Billy Cushman? Oh, come on. You know who I'd pick. Billy Cushman. Those other guys are so gross. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's my turn. Um, Eva, what handsome Hollywood stud would you love to see in his bikini briefs? Do? <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to take off your bra. <laughs> uh, that was fun. Yeah, Zsa Zsa. How did I know they were going to play that stupid game? What else could possibly go wrong? Hey, girls. Want a party? No. We won't take no for an answer, ladies. <laughs> On November 10th, 1988, Larry Talbis Chihuahua managed to eat his 20-page term paper the night before it was due. How could such a small dog devour such a big document? And why didn't he gain any weight? <laughs> Judge for yourself. Self, self, self. And what about the mysterious circumstances surrounding this broken window on July 10, 1991? A baseball was found inside, but it belonged to no one. And no one was around when the window was broken. Did the baseball somehow propel itself through the window? <laughs> Judge for yourself. <laughs> On May 11th, 1990, this cryptic message appeared on a chalkboard in front of a classroom full of students at Hawthorne High. Not one of the 32 students saw anyone write the message or had any idea how it got there. Was it poltergeist? Judge for yourself. Yes, these are just some of the mysteries you will encounter in Who, Me? A collection of the most unbelievable stories told by freshmen. Order now and you'll also get other mystery books including Phantom Report Cards, Strange Smells, and the very popular, How Did That Get There? What are yours, right to Slime Life Books. 124 Really Good Road, Big Fib, Wyoming. Not responsible for orders that get lost in the mail. Welcome Freshmen will return in a moment. Now back to Welcome Freshmen. The Merv Hume Entry. Seeking truth where falsehoods obscure. Unearthing facts where shame and deceit lie. Protecting justice and serving the innocent. These are the precepts of the Merv Hume Entry. Today's episode, Hawthorne's Sacred Secret. I'm standing on Hawthorne High's playing field. Once the pride and joy of the school district. But today, this turf may be part of a massive cover-up. Recent evidence has shown that Hawthorne's campus is literally covering up an ancient Indian burial ground. The proof? Well, for one thing. Well, what do we have here? A ceremonial tomahawk. What does it mean? Are the students in danger? The Murviumentary intends to find out. As rumors fly, and officials deny, I pry a little deeper. Oh my goodness! A totem pole! Spiritual guide to the cosmos and afterlife. Hey, you! What are you doing in that closet? You're not supposed to be in there. Is there something you don't want me to see in there, Mr. McBroom? Hmm? Look, Merv, would you run along? I'm fixing a light. Fixing the light of truth so it doesn't shine anymore? Eh? Hey! <laughs> Maybe you ought to fix your camera first, you little halfwit. No, wait! <laughs> I'm sitting in the commons area, a gathering place for freshmen now rumored to be haunted. Just idle gossip, you might say. Recently, there have been reports of strange paranormal activity. Odd wailing sounds echoing through the corridors. Ahem. Odd wailing sounds. <laughs> Objects move by themselves. <laughs> and uh, mysterious apparitions go bump in the night. <laughs> what do the ghosts want? Peace and quiet for their final resting place? Should Hawthorne High be closed and moved to a new location? How much longer can we endure haunted hallways, ghosts and goblins, and even mysterious power outages? <laughs> See that? It didn't even make me flinch. Flickering lights and screams are a part of everyday life here at Hawthorne. And what about the people who work here? Don't they notice anything? Or are they too concerned with their lowly dead-end jobs? 
Ah! It's Mapicho, the dark warrior from the D. Get back here, you little maggot! Ah! Oh! 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 <laughs> Upon my first foray into the world of red tape and no comment, I found this. <laughs> Obviously, Lippin is possessed by the ancient spirits. What else could account for this bizarre tribal dance? What are you gonna call them, Mr. Littman? Ghostbusters? No, Merv. Acme exterminators. Get out of my way. Why don't you just admit it, Libby? This is too big for an exterminator. Stupid rodents. Wonder if we still have some mouse traps. Wait, don't go in there. It's haunted. Merv, get a life. Please. <laughs> All right, smart boy. What's going on? I told you it was ha <laughs> haunted. Wait, I hope it's okay. Obviously, a warning from the great beyond. The spirits are about to speak. There you are! What? <laughs> it's Mapicho again. The waking of the spirits is inevitable. Oh, this kid's ruining me. Huh? <laughs> and so, in an attempt to cover up the truth, Hawthorne High is again trying to bury its haunted past under the guise of re the athletic field. Uh, hurry up, Murph. We just got another load in. This is Merv, and this has been another... <laughs> Cut it out, man! Secrets are lies, and bad manners besides. Oh, where'd you learn that? My mom. <laughs> well, it's true. Secrets are nothing but trouble. Oh, bull, Kevin. Everybody keeps secrets. Even the presidents of the United States. Oh, sure. Look where it got them. What do you mean? He means scandals. Public disgrace. Like President Nixon. Ever hear of Watergate? Yeah. Watergate. Hey, I learned that in history. You rang? Good one, Walter. <laughs> and since you bring it up, did you know that our first president knew very little about how to keep a secret? No, but I bet you're going to tell us all about it. <laughs> Quite right. In fact, during the Revolutionary War, the British and the early American strategists had never heard of the element of surprise. Come back in time with me to the American Revolution, when General George Washington led a class in freshman military strategy. To that fateful day, just before Christmas vacation, when the good general actually learned something himself. Now pay attention, class. These are the rudiments of military strategy. There's us, here, and across the Delaware River, there's the British. Them. Any questions? Very good. What a bonehead. <laughs> Question. How do we, that is, us, attack them, the British? This is known to the military strategists as uh, military strategy. Now, the best time to attack is right after morning tea, when the sun is bright in the sky. Yes, Kevin? Why daytime, General? Why not at night? Nighttime? You mean, with people shooting at each other in their pajamas? <laughs> Preposterous. No. We attack in broad daylight in these fearsome uniforms, in neat little rows, with a company of drummers and trumpeters to strike fear into the hearts of the enemy. Excuse me, General, but won't that spoil the element of surprise? This is not a surprise party. This is war. We want to show those Brits we darn well mean business. Uh, excuse me, General, but I think you're going about this all wrong. I beg your pardon? I think what Merv means to say is that we should be a little bit more sneaky. Yes, we should wear camouflage clothing, yes. not flashy uniform. Yeah. yeah. And we should attack when they least expect it, like tonight, Christmas Eve. Yeah. yeah. What? What? That's unheard of. Besides, I'm playing St. Nick in the officer's Christmas party. Ho, ho, ho. <clears throat> General Washington. We feel that if we don't cross the Delaware tonight, we're missing a big opportunity. But no one uses tactics like that. Right, which is why they'll never expect it. Yeah. Hmm. Attack without warning. Interesting. We could sneak up in small groups. Tara and I can go up to General Howe's tent and ring his doorbell and run. <laughs> and I can sneak up on their horses and put these whoopee cushions on the saddles. Yeah, and I can put toothpaste on their toilet seats. And I'll show you their foot. Then we'll TP the entire camp. Yeah! Oh, oh, enough! Now you've gone too far. Oh, this is no way to win a war. Oh, who could that be? Enter! <laughs> hey, yo, are you, uh, General George Washington? I most certainly am. All right, well, I got you six extra large anchovy pizzas here. <laughs> I didn't order any pizza. Hey, 
Your name's right here on the order. Somebody's got to pay for these. But I cannot tell a lie, and I tell you, I did not order it. Oh, oh of all the outrageous affronts. <laughs> hey, you know, come to think of it, you don't talk like the guy on the telephone. He talked like he had one of them English accents. General Howe! I should have known he would try something like this. Oh, the gall of that man. I've got a good mind to attack. Yeah! Charge! Yeah! Hey, 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 hey! It's cash only, bub. <laughs> Yes, General Howe's little prank so angered General Washington that he took the freshman's advice, charged the British camp, and struck a major blow for the American Revolution. Hey! Who's gonna pay for these pizzas? Not me. I only work here. <laughs> Until next time, this is Mr. History saying, Viva la Revolution! And hold the anchovies. <laughs> All right, men, listen up. Today's game with Middlebury is the last game of the season. Yeah! yeah. And, well, I don't have to tell you, it's been a tough season. We haven't won a game all year, Coach. Right. But here's our chance. One last shot at redeeming ourselves. Yeah! yeah. One last shot at glory. Yeah. yeah! One last shot at saving my job. Coach, <laughs> what is it, Scully? I've been thinking it over, him. Middlebury's the best team in the conference. And the last time we played him, we got beat pretty bad. I say we forfeit. Yeah, forfeit, 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 quiet. We're not going to forfeit anything, boys. No, boys, this time we're going to win. This time I'm bringing out my secret weapon. <laughs> Gentlemen, take a look at Hawthorne's next hero. Cushman? That's his secret weapon? <laughs> Middlebury will never know what hit him. This game has promised to be a dandy, and so far it's been no letdown. The score, Hawthorne Chicken Hawks 26, Middlebury 31, just 10 seconds left to play. Without a miracle, the Chicken Hawks will endure another winless season. Go get him, Tiger! Coach Roach is making a substitution, probably just another one of his stall tactics. All right, all right, this is it. Roger Blue, zero flank, left out right, Cushman primary, Zawalski release. Ready? Ready! Scully steps up to the line. Chicken Hawks in double wing formation. No, make that single wing. <laughs> Three! Seventeen! I'm gonna eat you up, fatso. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Scully, back to pass. His protection looks good. But he's under a heavy rush. Can't seem to find a man. Oh, Kelly, backpedaling. He passes. He's going deep. It's caught by three at the 40. Uh-oh, he's got company. He's on 35. To the 30. To the 25. To the 20. 15. One man to beat. Oh, no. Every weekday evening at 6.30, it's Rugrats time. This is Tommy. Yeah, Tommy, Chucky, Angelica, and all of them are here to kick off an hour of Nick Tunes. Every weekday evening at 6.30, 5.30 Central, only on Nick. Now, stay tuned for Double Dare, next on Nick.